been thinking a lot, as always. Never be afraid of thinking. <laughs> thinking when it is governed by clear observation. Thinking is the direction out of darkness. The thinking that is based in duality, which means the situation is separate from me. Me and my situation. The situation against me. The situation for me. Pro, anti. Pro, anti. For and against. This kind of intelligence is not helpful in returning your attention back to a state of peace, to a state that is free from fear. But the mind that is discerning, the intelligence that becomes observant, neutral, unprejudiced, the mind that can observe without injecting the fear which places one on one side or the other of the situation, of the predicament that a human being finds themselves in, me against the world, the world against me. And so this is where meditation becomes absolutely critical in evolving a discerning intelligence. It opens a light of awareness that is not involved at all in the duality of gain and loss, right and wrong, and ultimately all having their root in birth and death. So we all observe what it is to be involved in thinking and how that thinking stimulates, provokes, even compels action. Where do we find fault with ourselves and with our world? In thinking and in acting. Let's look now in meditation with an observing mind. What do we truly observe? Not what do we think? Not how do I judge my actions? Not the story of judging others' actions. What do I observe? And it will become very clear as you observe many thoughts, the quality of thinking is that it is all in movement. Sometimes that movement is very slow and peaceful. Sometimes that movement is chaotic and peaceless, even fearful, anxious because of the movement, the indecision, the frustration, the fear, in the movement of thinking. And our natural instinct is to resolve fear, to resolve the sense of problem that must be the cause of this fear. And so we think more, we act more, we think more, we act more, and this fire starts to engulf us. Now we are in the fire of fear and division, pro or anti, right or wrong. I'm going to gain, I'm going to lose. Ultimately, all having their root, I am born, I will die. Because I am born, I will die is the root cause of body identification. No body, no world. No body, no story of the world. 
no body, no fear. But the solution is not to destroy this body. The solution is how can I live in this body like one sails a boat. You get into the boat and you sail it. You put up your sail. Jacques is a great sailor. He knows that feeling when you get in the boat and the wind catches your sail. And now you are moving. The duality mind will say, I am moving. But the reality is wind is moving you. Your work is how do you steer your boat? Our work, having arrived in these bodies for a temporary time, the question is, how do I steer my boat? How do I navigate in this world? If you are navigated by the sense that I am doing, which means a total belief in the thinking mind, and in that dualistic mind has to be divided this side against that side. If you are navigated by this navigation system of duality, you are going to turn your boat round and round and round in circles. Going left and right and left and right, pushed and pulled by all the currents of the worldly minds that pull you into all separate directions. So I started the session by saying, use your mind. Don't be afraid of thinking. Don't be afraid of feeling the stirring of fear. The uncertainty and insecurity of indecision. The harshness within of righteousness. I'm on the right side. Then you make a stand and that stand is firm, fixed, solid, it's not fluid. So we all at one point come to see this and that is why we are drawn to meditation. Knowing that you cannot escape this body life, we look for a way, like a light of direction how to navigate this body. So meditation gives us a great insight how to navigate. And the very founding practice, if you can discern between you, the observer, and what is observed, and you practice this, then you observe what unfolds. The ego position based in duality starts to soften, releases. I am the observer. And this observing practice untangles the mind from this dualistic story stance, position. Untangles the intelligence out of chaos, going round and round in circles, justifying one's position, blowing up circumstances so that one creates fear and worry, unease and agitation, just because we've blown up the mind, exaggerated the mind. Let's return to our intelligence, 
I am the observer. Initially, this will just seem like words. And there is a struggle in the acceptance of this practice. Because we look again in the scientific mind for evidence. I will only trust that I am the observer if I see evidence. I have discovered that you continue with the practice through the doubt. I am the observer. I am the observer. And you start tuning in to the power that observes the thinking mind in which all the situations appear so real. The world appears so real. You keep observing. Don't be caught in the story. You observe it. And it will start revealing slowly and slowly a kind of returning to yourself. A returning to your true nature, which is the quality or nature of the observer. That you are at peace. What you observe is agitation, conflict, division. But who you are as the observer is at peace. It is already like that. You don't have to make it that. I am the observer. And watch, make the experiment. Spend a little time in the practice. I observe thinking. I am not bound in thinking. I observe the situations. I am not bound in the situations. I observe the world. I am not in the world. The world as I have made it through the mind is not true. It is not a true perspective. It is a distortion of truth. Come back to the fundamentals. Return home. I am the observer. What is the quality of the observer? Sat, truth. What is truth? Not based in information, not based in experience, based in being, based in pure consciousness. I am the truth. That truth, if it is to be true, has to always be true cannot be sometimes true. Truth has to be always true. So it has to be that which is always, what is always there. So we describe this always there as ever present. It is the unchanging truth. What changes? Your state. Waking, dreaming, deep sleep. They all change. Even within your waking state, what is? Change. Sometimes I feel like this. Sometimes I feel like that. Sometimes I feel high. Sometimes I feel low. Feeling, thinking, experiencing, acting. Feeling, thinking, experiencing, acting. It's all what you observe. Changing. 
So it cannot be true. Turn home to yourself, sat, chit. What is chit? Knowing. What do we observe in the waking state? All that is known. The objects are known. The opinions are known. <clears throat> the feelings are known. The objects and the way that one uses those objects, action, is known. The knower, as I described, to have the quality of observing, reflecting, that doesn't go anywhere, ever. Even when thinking arises, the knower is there. Sat, chit, ever present, ever knowing. Anand, ever at peace. Return home through this practice of observing rather than being involved in all that which is changing and you return to peace. Not the peace that is of experience, of thinking or of feeling or of acting. Peace that is revealed when you return your intelligence back to yourself. I am. That is ever present, ever at peace. Amram Ham, Madaram Ham. We've used these words, guided by the enlightened vision of the sages and saints that have all spoken the same truth. We have guided this boat through the ocean of this world, allowing the wind to be in our sails and stopping the struggle that is rowing, 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 round and around and around. Meditation is a deep, deep surrender. Let the wind move you. That wind is the formless state of your own being, Sat, Chit, Anand. These words can guide you to recognize this. The rest you have to practice, the absorbed again and again, back into yourself, allowing the ego mind to surrender. The ego mind releases, surrenders, softens, relaxes, so that we can make this knowledge our, our direct realization. We can sit with the wind in our sails, Realizing the presence of our own being, not our personal being, our real being, that is the same as your being, where there is no my being and your being. It is that awesome, immense, indestructible power of being, whose nature is sat, jit, anand. truth, consciousness, and bliss. It is indestructible, Amaram. It is at peace, Madaram. The ego mind never wants to surrender, but in the light of observing practice, Eventually, it starts to release. And the boat then goes on course. Out of the rounding and rounding of fear, worry, confusion, and division. 
Don't wait for your world to release you from division. Don't wait for your family members to release you. You become released. Release yourself from this mind. Steer your course through the wisdom of Amram Ham, Madaram Ham. Don't be afraid of thinking. They are just little waves lapping up against your boat. The wind is infinitely stronger than these little waves. Even when the waves are strong, the wind still has the power to cut through the waves. Stay your course. Use the practice, I am the observer. You can also repeat the description of that observer, Amaram Ham, Madaram Ham. This navigates your attention, which means navigating this boat to surrender to the wind. The unseen force. What evidence do we have of wind? We can experience its force. What evidence do we have of the divine being? We can experience its force. If we don't use the mind towards the direction of the truth, unchanging, ever-present being, then the mind will use us, which means if you don't focus on the course ahead directly, then you bring great importance to the waves and the waves will push your boat this way and that way. And you will live a state of uncertainty, fear, worry, anxiety, which is the fear of death. Because these waves will destroy you. 
But if you allow that wind in terms of this light of observing, direct you through the waves, over the waves. The waves are there, thoughts come, they go, but they're not important and they definitely do not speak the truth. If we don't utilize this power of our higher intelligence, then the thinking mind, the lower mind, the ego-driven mind, the mind colored by division will use us, ultimately destroy us, destroy our lives because we will live in fear and worry and spread that fear and worry with every interaction we have. We will not be an uplifting force on our planet, we will be a destructive force. People speak a lot to me these days. <laughs> they say because of COVID, these days, there's a lot of problems. These days, there's this division in our societies. These days, there's a problems in the government. There's no these days. There's always been two options. Either you identify with the ocean waves, which is the world, or you identify as the observer in this analogy I'm using today, the wind. This has always been the predicament of a human being. It is not only these days. It's only in times of crisis the division becomes revealed, more obvious. It's always there. The division is always on the level of waves, this wave versus that wave. We have to raise our consciousness to a state where there is no division. And that division has to be resolved and healed within yourself. If each one took responsibility to resolve their own split, their own schism within, the uncertainty and fear that leads to a kind of psychosis of the mind, a total split within oneself, where they feel divided from peace, divided from love, separate from peace, certainly separate from God. There's no these days because there's no these circumstances. There's always circumstances in the world. Synonymous. It's not like there's circumstances in the world, like there's eggs in the basket. Very presentation or appearance of the world is the circumstances. But through meditation, we evolve a way of viewing, of seeing, of perceiving the world where we do not feel engulfed by it, deluded by it, bound in it. In one moment, we can turn our attention. I am the observer. And the observer is like a wind. It is a force that is stronger than the waves. And I can direct the navigation of this boat towards the truth that has always been the truth. It is not the truth of science. It is not the truth of our justice system. It is not the truth of the political system. 
It is not the truth of an opinion. It is the eternal truth. It is not the truth of this religion against that religion or any religious idea. It is the truth of your being. Pure consciousness, pure being, pure love, absolute oneness. These words may seem hollow. They may seem just like words or ideas. But if you keep practicing, I am the observer. That observer is Amaram, indestructible, like the wind. It is at peace because it is not bound in the back and forth and this and that of the waves. It is Amaram, Madram. If this guides your boat, these will not appear to be just words. Oneness, unity, love, consciousness, being. They will be your direct realization. 